just about noon, about 11.55 a.m. Good morning, we'll say for now, but in a couple of minutes will be afternoon. And uh, welcome to beautiful Gulfstream Park and Gulfstream today. Ron Nicoletti along with Abby Fuller. We're we'll trying to give you some useful insights today. Another beautiful day here in South yes, Florida. Yes. We got a fast main track, we got a firm turf course, and you know, we got some uh, great betting opportunities this afternoon, and we're gonna show you what we have going here. We're gonna uh, uh, put those up in the first. Of course, we start the day with the early pick five each and every day, and that's the five first five races on the card. You see it's a 50 cents wager. Uh, because of the amount of horses we had, the rolling super high five will not start until race number three today, and that is race number three for the rolling super high five. And that'd be the big news, of course, is the rainbow six races three through eight with almost $290,000 in the pool, $281,467 to be exact. And then we end the afternoon in race number four with an eight race card with the final uh, super high five, uh, pick five, excuse me, of the afternoon. There you see it, another 50 cent bet, so a lot of fun. It was a, yeah. a nice day yesterday, and they almost hit that rainbow six. Yeah, they, they were close, so <laughs> some people got paid, but not the single yet. But we always mention the six out of six yesterday, there were a couple of tickets yep. paid $32,000, so they didn't get the big jackpot. Boy, if you had six out of six, as I mentioned, a couple of tickets uh, paid $32,000. Nice. That was way over $300,000 yesterday, and we're expecting more of the same this afternoon. As we mentioned at the top of the show, a fast main track, a firm turf course this afternoon. And you know what I like? to do start in the first race so all right let's do that. i think that's a good place to start <laughs> well our first race this afternoon is a seven and a half furlong event it's on the turf course these are claim is three and up non-winners of three races in life, uh, life or a race on the turf since october 8th or three rows so lots of conditions yes. in this race and we both ended up after all those conditions we both think this three exclusive strike has a chance and this one a 13 time turf winner yeah and and that's you know i you know i love those <laughs> warriors already we've seen that and and this guy certainly fits that bill um he's been knocking on the door uh with the the three seconds he does have a lot of space between his races you know he's august october december so february and april pretty much every other month but it works for him. He's doing good. He doesn't have to run every every week or every month. He's, you know, holding his own, and he's a nice old classy uh, nine-year-old horse, 31 times on the board from 47. Yeah, and, you know, here's the thing with that. You read the conditions of the race. I was mentioning them. There's all different conditions of this race, three in life or a race on the turf in six months or three-year-olds, and this horse fits those conditions perfectly, right. as you mentioned, spaced out, hasn't won on the turf for a certain amount of time. So that's how a 13-time turf turf winner right. can get in and run against horses that are maybe all looking for their third lifetime victory. Uh, the other horse I used on my ticket underneath that one, we'll talk about the seven in a minute with yours, was Class in Cash. This one moved to the Jane Sibeli Varn uh, via the claim, stretches out today around two turns after coming with a neck of defeating uh, $16,000 three lifetime claim is going five furlongs. I think this son of exchange rate should be a major part of the pace scenario today. Stretching out from that five furlongs to seven and a half. If you're not aware at Gulfstream Park, seven and a half furlongs on the turf is around two turns here. Right. So I love horses that, uh, you know, this one's going to have some early gas to go up there. So I put that one on the ticket. What would you see about the number seven in here? That's Ginger Goose. Yeah, the seven, you know, he also has speed. And I thought maybe he would get to... Do, if he didn't want to press the pace, I thought he could press of the four and, and the horse that you just spoke about, the five. And I thought if he wanted to edge back and ease off them just a little bit from that outer post, he could, and not a huge field, so he's not going to get hung out too wide. Yeah, and we both threw the two Prince Vincenzo on our ticket who moved to the Phil Serpy bond via the claim. Uh, tries condition competition coming up short. That was against $25,000 yeah. open claim is going a mile. Uh, what we mean by open claim is these are horses that they come into a race with no conditions. Uh, they just are $25,000 claimers can have 50 wins or two wins yes. or nine wins. That's so that's a tough a, spot. Tough spot. Yeah. So this one getting a little uh, class break today. That's a stakes place son of exchange rate. If you look back, this horse actually was stakes place, uh, right. you know, back uh, uh, early on in its career. Finds a spot where he can get that first win of the year. That's how he fits this condition in here. So it, it's great to read the conditions right. at the top of your program when you try and do these races. With that said, we will go to race number two today. And we do have a scratch in here of number five, Silver Nile. And with that scratch, just want to let you know there'll be no show trifecta 
trifecta or superfecta wagering in race number two because we'll have a four horse field. It's a one mile maiden special weight event. Phillies and mares, uh, uh, four year olds and upward. And I'll start it off with the number three, Stella Rose. It's a beautifully bred daughter of my chef, debuting for trainer Christophe Clement. Bullet workouts up at Payson Park uh, on the training track. Tyler Gaffleone at the top. It's Astronic Stables homebred, so it's the house. I want to show you a stat uh, from Christophe Clement on the main track with first-time stars. Now you see it. Not that Stella. He's no, more known for his turf. He's only 3 for 25, 12%, 40% in the money, $2.28 ROI. That's first time on the turf on the dirt, excuse me, going a mile. So this is not one of the things that the barn excels at because they don't do it that much, you know? Right. But there is a positive return on investment. So maybe there's a chance to beat a horse that's regally bred and training well, and you tried to do that with the number one, Wolf right. Gourmet. Exactly. It's hard to go a mile on the dirt first time out as a maiden and, and win. And and Christophe Clement, great trainer. But yes, I, I absolutely, you know, watch him for years with all those turf horses. So this is something different. Um, so that is why, yes, I went with um, Wolf Gourmet. This horse has been knocking on the door, been there in the hunt, um, got a good post to save some ground. Um, it's a one turn mile, so that's not a big deal, the post, but it's just uh, it looked like the inside was decent yesterday. I thought this horse figured in with this group. And the trainer is Dale Romans, and Dale right. Romans ended the meet here with a, just a fantastic string. He was ridden, winning races and bunches. So probably a logical choice in there. I do have it second on my ticket. Uh, the other horse that uh, I threw in was the four awesome, uh, my, my awesome mom, stretching out to a mile. Uh, you know, didn't show much in the seven furlong debut. She's just like a bottom horse for me. Uh, anything else? You went with the two in second, and that's awesome Marchisa. Yeah, and I figured, you know, you know what, this horse got beat four lengths, uh, or finished fourth, first time out, and always figure a horse to improve second time out, and, and you know, the distance, she's going to stretch a little further, but that looks like it might be in her favor. Well, we're going to take a short break here, and when we come back for race number three, we're going to show you my rainbow six ticket today. Yeah, I got four out of six yesterday, but you need that six out of six. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Gulfstream today. Ron and Abby here, and we're going to take a look at the Rainbow Six here. But before I show you my ticket, let's give you the conditions of this race. Five furlongs on the turf, claim is Phillies and Mayors, three-year-olds and up. Jockey changing the one, make the runner, Jesus Rios. Also scratch the three, Lady Red Love, and the number four, Gitana Storm. And you'll see my ticket, $57.60 today. Could not find a single, but I think I got the logical two in here. I hope we agree. I didn't see your selection yet. With the one, two, three deep, three deep. Four, uh, two, and then four, and then two. Fifty-seven dollars and sixty cents. And uh, I usually stick around forty-three, but I figure, what the heck? It being it's over three hundred thousand dollars, I'm going to send it in this afternoon. So, uh, in this race, uh, how did you say it? Yeah, I, I had the two on top, uh, loud and lovely. And this horse has some tactical speed. She's shown a little bit of speed, but also ability to close a little bit, and you know, fits really well in here. Um, 25,000 dropping to 12.5. Yeah, I mean, that's where I went yeah. there. You know, breaking from a tough outside post last time, 10, tracking the pace, four wide, finishing fifth. Was the favorite that day, as you mentioned, at the yeah. $25,000 level. Uh, Jamie Ness just does an excellent job. Nick Barr, as we talked about this yes. uh, jockey yesterday, he's doing a good job. He really rides nice. And so a drop in competition. I went with the one in second, and so did you, and that's yeah. some kind of fabulous. Being the length at this level of distance back at jo Gulfstream Park West, it was way back in November. Uh, it's making the third start of our current form cycle. Uh, failed to uh, show much when bumping at the start, a recent five furlong sprint at $16,000 level. Terry Pompey, as I mentioned, the jockey changed to Jesus Rios today. A logical spot. I'm keen yeah. off that race back in November. 
Yeah, yeah, th that's what I thought she looked like. She's due for a little improve, and, and, and Terry's capable with a horse like this. I, th I thought it was a good spot. And, uh -huh. you know, uh, we both, I think we both had the number three in here that scratched out Lady right. Red Love. I added the six Starship Brooklyn. Uh, good connections in there, and Abby used the number five in there, and that's Cotton Jenny. Yeah, just... Um, kind of threw a long <laughs> shot in there. <laughs> well, that's the way to go, but it looks like the logical two are the one and two, but uh, we've seen that lots of times this year where you think the logical two are going to win it, especially in the Rainbow Six, and right. that does not come to fruition. So let's uh, flip the page and go to race number four this afternoon, and this one is a five for a long turf event. Acclaimers, Phillies and Mares, four-year-olds and up, $12,500. We do have a jockey change on the two, make the ride of Diego Gomez, but also know that scratch the main track only the participant in here, uh, number 10, Flash Jack. Uh, I wanted to go back and show you the performance of the horse I have on top of my ticket here, and this is uh, number one, Breach of Duty, and this one is dropping to this $12,500 level. Broke from an outside post, but watch when this horse is turning for home. He just got stuck behind a wall of horses that day. He was the number 10, just looking for a place to go. You know, finally ducks to the inside and finishes with a lot of energy. I just yeah. thought off that performance and the drop today, uh, looks at the clear run, and the horse seems to be running very well at the end and just got boggled up behind those horses last time out. So I put that horse on top of my ticket today. I just thought maybe with a clean trip, of course, with the drop to the $12,500 level, that his horse might be able to win it. But we have our exacta flip-flop. You did go with the number three, and that is Archer Queen on top of your ticket. Right, a lot of speed in this race here, and I thought this off the pace runner maybe takes advantage of um, of that happening and coming on. Uh, if especially we saw a few races yesterday where it seemed like they went a little quickly on the <laughs> front end, and maybe especially the the longer races. That seven and a half, we saw a couple of 22 first quarters, 22 and change, yeah, and that's saw, too quick. Yeah, we actually saw one race where a guy went out, you know, with the 12 horse just making ridiculous early fractions. Uh, I wrote in my analysis today about the horse you have on top. The faster they go up front, the better it will be right. for this daughter of the Wildcat. These, of course, are fillies and mares. I, I closed it out in here with the number seven, Phyllis Ann, a five-time turf winner at the distance, 21 races, five starts, five seconds, three thirds, dropping a notch after disputing, talking about fast pace last time. And this one was banging on the front end with horses that were going 21 and three, 43 and four That's, before yeah, fading to finish I remember six. That race. Uh, that that race was the one we just showed you with breach of duty in it last time out. Uh, she's going to be up there. I think she's got to play catch me if you can and put yes. her on a ticket because maybe she'll get loose and be gone. Absolutely, yeah. That was um, I remember seeing that race as it was happening going did they really just go 43 <laughs> and change i don't know that i've seen that much well who else did you use on your ticket um i had the six skippy is back and um y you know this horse has a decent turf number it's going to try it for the first time so that's that's why I went with that. Yeah, I mean, th this horse here figures in, in the mix there and everything pretty, you know, this, of course, is actually second choice on the morning line. I was trying to beat it today with, uh -huh. you know, with the one horse that I thought had that little bit of trouble a and the seven. You never know if a horse like that, you know, can maybe set some soft for fractions and maybe right. steal this thing on the front end. But you were right. There's a lot of other speed in here that might set off for the horse you have on top of your ticket, and that is the three, Archer Queen. With that said, we'll flip the page and we'll go to race number five today. This one, one mile and one sixteenth. Uh, this is on the turf. Maiden claim is Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and upward. The claiming level, $12,500. Scratch number 10, cross my heart, but we're still dealing with a full field of 11 runners in here. And uh, we both have the similar exactor yeah. in here. We'll start with your number one. You can take it here with the number one, Sassy Spirit. This one has our claimant tech sliced in half today. That's, and, you know what, that's one of the first things I look at. When I open the page, right. I go, who's dropping? Because um, as a rider, too, you like to be on the ones dropping <laughs> for the most part. Right. Um, you know, and, and it's the time of year to do that and get some money, get at it, you know. Before, when you drop in the winter meet, it's, you know, you might find a tough horse right, in right. there. Now you're really, you're dropping. And this horse has a couple of thirds 
to recommend her with those well, um, tougher horses. And she'll be coming from off the pace. Well, as I mentioned, we have ours flip flop. I went with the nine starship hostility on top, and I'll tell you why. Shifting back to the turf today after dueling for the lead and fading to finish third against similar. That was going a mile in the 16th on the main track. She looks like the lone speed to me in this yep. race, but comes with some baggage, this horse. She's the daughter of Warrior's Reward, but she's zero for 16 on the turf. So yep. she, you, Don, if you do, and Don, if you don't with this one, looks like the lone speed. I mean, I couldn't find any horse really in my, in my estimation. Maybe someone's definitely going to go up and run with this sure. horse, but that zero for 16 record on the turf is hit me in right. the head. So, uh, I, you know, I can understand you going with the one on top with the nine and second. Now, you also used, uh, you went a little bit to the outside with the number 11, uh, Kitten Star in third. Yeah, this horse um, is, I, I believe the pedigree says this horse is meant to run well on the grass. And uh, this race she finds, um, she's back on it after a few, you know, uh, subpar for sure, subpar yeah. efforts, but I thought maybe this is her wake up call. Yeah, and you always like a horse like that, six to one on the morning line, so got a little bit of a price over there, and uh, you lost some of your notes over there, I so did. now you're gonna have to wing it. <laughs> 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 the wind, big wind came up and <laughs> took her notes away. Number seven, Rock Hard Lady is going back to the turf after stalking the pace and finishing second to a runaway winner in there called another, a cougar, this one a 16,000 dollar maiden test it was moved from the lawn to one mile on a sloppy main track the trainer gustavo delgado edgar zayas an excellent com uh, combo there yeah. with those two handling the surface switch today and this horse up there at five to one uh, like the 11 both of these horses you know i think the one and nine might be the right two but this horse certainly uh can be somewhere uh, on the ticket and uh, we'll see how this plays out so we got a horse that got speed but doesn't like to win on the turf. Right. And a horse that looks like it's going to sit the trip into one sassy spirit. So race number five, you see our selections up there. And now we'll flip the page and go to race number six. And this uh, kicks off our final bet three of the afternoon with races six, seven, and eight. It's a one-mile claimer, four and up, $6,250. Got some uh, jockey change and a scratch to tell you about. The jockey change comes on the horse Steve I love the name of the horse because all you have to do is say Steve, Steve. Nick Juarez <laughs> will be riding Steve today at scratch the seven big blue nation we're gonna go back first I want to show you about a, a race of the horse I have on top not welcome I thought it was a big pretty game performance and then we'll talk about Steve and here's not welcome uh, should have the proverbial screws tightened today return from the freshening you go up this horse duel for the lead finish second in this race but what I liked about this race last time out the horse that beat uh, not welcome last time was Ascot Squadron who's a hard knocking campaigner and that was Air Squadron's second consecutive race and I just thought not welcome was right there battling till the yes. end and I think after that performance I put this one on top of the ticket yeah yeah I, I and I can certainly see why you did um, I, I liked um, Steve uh, not welcome, yes. Right. No, no, but you like Steve, so let's hear about my buddy Steve. Well, Steve <laughs> Steve won his last out, and, and he was claimed from Terry Pompey. He's got six wins under his belt. Uh, Jamie Ness reel, wheels him right back for the same type of level. Uh, that's really what you're supposed to do. When you win a lot of races like those guys, that's what you do. I got to show you the stat that you're not going to believe on Jamie Ness. I found this incredible over the last five years. I love years. your stats. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> He's 110 for 260, 40. 41% win average, 71% in the money, $1.95 ROI, first start after a claim over the past five wow. years. This is his game. And yes. what is amazing about this, uh, this stat, you would think the ROI, the return of investment, would even be lower. So he's right around breaking even with that. So hard not to have Steve on top of your ticket. I just found this incredible that he's, never mind that he's won 110 races, that he's done it 260 times. So, uh, yeah. uh, you know, Steve, a hard knocking campaigner in a good barn this afternoon so uh, the other horse I used on my ticket along with the five was a fastidious son who's hoping to save more for the stretch run today uh, after setting, uh, setting the pace getting that uh, reeled in when finishing third behind aforementioned Steve last time yeah. out but I know you have the number three horse and I want to hear about this in second in here is a pretty square price yeah um, dreaming of um, Clarice, Clarice. Think, yeah. well I'm I'm <laughs> up there with with um, Steve and Fest, uh, did but I mess may up? Maybe you wrote the wrong number down. 
Well, I've got, yeah, because I've got the, the nine also, um, right. fastidious Design. son, who, is, you know, stretched out last time uh, out, a decent third, right. and and I think um, this horse, he should he should uh, be right there. He's got four wins um, from f on the turf, so. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll see about the three. Some reason you're owed a three up there. We'll figure out the problem. We'll let you know between races. Let's go to race number seven this afternoon. Seven and a half furlongs, an allowance optional claimer. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds, and upward scratch the four. Blavatsky also scratched the main track only. Number 12, How's My Gold I like a horse in here who's 10 to 1 on the morning line, nice. and that is Princess Fiona, and I'll tell you why. Stretching out around two turns, tracked the pace last time out, finished third against this caliber of competition, going five furlongs. It's a daughter of Smart Strike. I think she's going to be forwardly placed this afternoon, and I think has a huge spot to win this race from on or just off the pace this afternoon. So another one of my speed plays on the turf. So number three, Princess Fiona. If I can get anywhere near that price, I will be betting this one. I used it on my Rainbow Six ticket. So Princess nice. Fiona on top of my ticket. The logical choice is the horse you probably have on top is the number seven, and that's yeah. Indy Gita. Yes, Indy Gita. Um, you know, this horse is coming back just a little bit in distance, uh, and I think this horse will be close up. Um, it, it, this horse has um this horse has four wins oh i was reading my <laughs> so i did get messed up earlier yeah. sorry about that but yeah indy gita um i th i thought fit really well in here it's kind of an obvious choice but yeah i, I definitely i mean that turn back is going to definitely help the number seven indy gita i i closed it out with the number 11 horse in here sequoia princess trained sharply across down at gp west in preparation first start showed promise on the turf both here and at gulfstream park west before the layoff giuseppe ayasid uh, he has MEC El Hanamiro atop the store of a street cry today. Uh, this barn known to pop off the layoff and, and a good rider in MEC El Hanamiro. Very impressive at the championship meet. He came in from Venezuela and knocked heads with the top jockeys in the country and did very well. So a horse yeah. that I have on my ticket, I believe is 10 to 1 on the line. Yeah, and, and you're right. And they've been a little quiet, the Isidermia yeah, barn. Right. And I think they were sitting waiting. Right. You know, they, they train over there at by Gulfstream Park West, right. and they're very connected with Jaramillo right. um, Venezuelans, and right. and I think helped get him over here. So yeah. uh, that's a yeah. So anybody else in the race that you like? Um, I liked the five Poison Art. I thought he'd appreciate back to the grass. Um, he was he was tough with better horses on the turf. We'll see how that works out. Now we're going to talk about our final race of the afternoon. And this one, one mile on the turf. These are claim is three-year-olds and up. $16,000. And we're going to scratch both also eligible entries, 13 and 14. And we got a full field of 12 runners in here. And uh, number five, Social Stranger on top of my ticket. This one moved to the George Navarro Bond. Vita Claim returns to the turf. A coming with a nose of X in the maiden ranks. And I want to go back uh, uh, and show you this performance of this horse at uh, Social Stranger. Uh, stretch run just gets beat in nose. We're going to show you the, the race I was just talking about. Thought it was a real good performance. The son of a clue. He's faced a tougher on the turf in the fast. So this one, I just thought it was a real game performance in here for this horse and I thought it could run well uh, shifting that to the turf this afternoon and there you see just comes down and they ding dong it right to the wire and uh, I don't know how they separate it but they yeah. do so uh, <laughs> that's a real tight <laughs> real yeah. tight finish yeah, absolutely. Got, the got the close photo in there how'd you see the uh, last race of yeah the day? I put the four on top furious warrior um, I thought this horse could sit the trip re right, right there right. wherever he wanted to sit um, and and you got that horse in second so right. yeah I I just thought you know he's been close enough um, and little bit, little notch, easier horses here, and I thought it was a good spot for yeah, him. Yeah, that's the reason I had him on there. Michelle Nihe is the trainer. Luca yep. Panici in the saddle this afternoon. Number 12, Spanish Armada, was given some time off after chasing the pace. Weak Nick to finish fourth uh, behind a trio of next out winners, so it's a key race. It was a fruitful $16,000 maiden race going a mile into 16th. It was on a softened turf courses look at it, look listed as good. Eddie Plisa Jr., Edgar Prado, Hall of Famer, atop the son of Warfront. Love Warfronts, love the fact that this horse is coming out of a key race. So lots of things to like about the 12, and I like the fact that this horse is 10 to 1. So we'll see uh, how the uh, number 12 runs. Anything else before we turn it over to <laughs> our track announcer, Gabe Pruitt?
I like the four a little bit. Uh, uh, sorry, the nine. We right. talked about the four. Right. The nine Dothraki warriors coming off those two good seconds. So I thought, you know, this this horse should be right there and seemed to be maybe going to be a decent price. Well, I, I picked him a couple of times. I'm done with him because okay. I'm, I'm a fan <laughs> of uh, the show, the Dothraki warriors, uh, the Game of Thrones. So I picked this horse a bunch of times, <laughs> kept looking at him, and that's part of that uh, situation, wherever the Dothrakis are. I'm done with him. He'll probably win this afternoon. So uh, <laughs> that's how happy and I see the Thursday card, eight races, fast main track, uh, a firm turf course, huge carryover in the Rainbow Six. All the scratches, all the jockey changes you need and everything you need to know and have a fun day here at Gulfstream Park is going to come up when uh, Gabe comes up and updates you on all everything right. you need to have a fun day at Gulfstream Park. Good luck, everybody.